Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, I was just laughing because I turned the camera on and I'm used to there being like a beautiful shot of plants in the background instead it's just, yeah, all that. First day outside, I mean, I've been outside before. First nice day hanging outside in the garden and it's, things are still kind of having their winter blues going on. But that's fine, plenty of time to get all that taken care of and cleaned up and a lot of it's just the time of year. Things will start to green up and look better here pretty soon. A few months ago, I potted up a whole bunch of different artichokes and some oregano over here. In that video, I talked about how I figured that the oregano would germinate and outgrow the artichokes very quickly as far as needing to be pulled and repotted. And well, you can see right here what happened, right? The opposite. Artichokes, they grew very, very quickly. The oregano, not quite ready. There was one cell right here that I was able to pull out, pot that up with the artichokes. I potted them up into four inch containers but that was it the rest are still getting their roots down i'm gonna let them stay in here for probably another week or so they've been pinched back some of them pinched back twice now they just need a little bit more time so that brings me to right now i have this flat here for seedlings and uh, lots of space in it and i need to do something with this because this is going to go back into the grow space it'll be sitting on top of a moisture wicking mat and that i don't feel like there's going to be very even distribution of moisture with you know soil over here and nothing over here and that maybe probably actually wouldn't make that much of a difference but the main thing was just i was trying to figure out okay what kind of seeds am i going to put in here what am i going to do with this and really i can't do much with seedlings in here or with seeds as long as those oregano are still in here because you need to cover it up take them off of those wicking mats when they're just seeds right and the just two different conditions going on here but i did have some plants inside that i've wanted to get cuttings from for quite a while sticking to cuttings of plants that aren't going to need a humidity dome over them just really easy simple plants mostly these tritoscantia nanox and then these back here are the mandula pothos mandula mandula one of those epiphany marium whether or not the pothos are actually going to make it into this i don't really know because when i was in the grow room taking my cuttings and putting them into this water here i was thinking that these were bigger they're only about an inch and a half to two inches that might i don't know if that's going to be big enough for pothos but we'll see i had mentioned before that when i do propagation videos i would try and remember to film them it's something i tend to zoom through and forget to talk about so i thought why not turn the camera on we can do this together this is a this is actually a seedling mix here could probably just use a regular potting soil for this the plants i've picked out here are very simple plants to get going so you don't really need to do anything fancy with them this is light warrior seedling starter from fox farm which when i got this bag i only got it because it was the only bag i could find at multiple nurseries this is a couple of months ago but i was really skeptical it was 32.99 it's fox farm they tend to be more expensive they also usually have some pretty good soil but i was just trying to figure out like what it, why this better be some really good stuff for $32.99. It claims to have the mycorrhizae and the uh, humic acid in there. I gave it a try with the artichokes. I'm not using that. I gave it a try with the artichokes, and I was actually very, very pleased with the germination rates and how well they grew. Get some more water in there, and this time it's probably going to be too much. I've grown artichokes from seeds many times, and this was the best yield I've ever gotten from the seeds. But the growth space is also a lot warmer than it's ever been before, so that likely had something to do with it. Though I've used heat mats in the past too. So it's hard to say what's due to what, but this is what I have. So it's what I'm going to use. The reason I was so skeptical about this wasn't necessarily whether or not it'd be good. I mean, you can look at it and go, okay, that's really rich and dark, Some sticks in there. But it was more the sterileness of it. Because with seedlings, we try and keep those mixes nice and sterile, or as sterile as we can with it being you know, soil or whatever inert growing media is being used. The stuff from Fox Farm tends to have a lot of organics in it, which is great for the root health of the plants and for the plants in general. For starting the seeds, I was like, ah, I don't know about that. I don't know how much gunk I want in my mix. You have to worry about things dampening off and fungus gnats, right? And there are definitely a lot of fungus gnats in my growth space, but that's fairly easy to treat so i'm not too worried about that this should make a perfectly fine media for getting those cuttings going i would think and like i said the cuttings that i picked out here to use in this i intentionally chose because they tend to be plants that just root they're plants that will very easily get going i'm gonna fill these up 
we'll come back after I get some soil in there. Isn't that a beautiful sight? I love the look of a seedling tray when it's packed full of fresh soil. All right, so I'm going to start with the Tretus scantias here because, well, they're more appropriately sized to this. The pothos may end up needing to go into a separate container. I already made the cuttings, so I got to do something with them. I guess I don't have to, but I should. Tretus scantia, one of the easiest plants to get going from a cutting. If I mean, maybe the easiest. Spider plants are pretty easy, but you're not necessarily going with cuttings when you start those. You're going with either a really a division, a cutting of the baby. It doesn't matter. You get what I'm saying. I'll pull off the lower leaves on these, or actually, I could have split this into two. Couldn't I? I may still do that. Also, pardon the nails. You saw what I was just doing. That stuff, it gets under your nails. It's staying there forever. I'm going to have to cut these puppies off when I get inside. That color's not coming out. I'm going to be making the cuttings very small as they go in here. They only need a couple of leaves on top like this. That's it. And just going right down into this pre-moistened soil. That's all there is to it. Even the wonky ones like this. I prefer they have two leaves on them, but this is all right. It should still get going. See this piece right here? Normally with something like this, I would probably make the cut right around here and root that top part, not worry about the bottom part. But I have all of these cells, so I'm going to go ahead and split it into thirds. Even this tiny little piece here that you would think, eh, that's not enough. As long as you've got node in here, which there is some node right there, then there's still plant tissue available that could get rooted. May as well use that, although with tinier pieces like that, I may end up going ahead and pulling those and doubling them up together if I end up having many of those, but I don't really think I will. See like this leaf right here, don't need that, pull that off, and then I have a piece right there that I can get rooted. Then I have another piece right here that I want to cut right below that line so that that node is left on this one. Could you even see that? We get it, just making sure that there's at least one node. And for the rest of these, just because I'm fairly certain that I have enough space, enough cells, I suppose I could count them, but I don't really feel like it. I'm just having fun here. I'm gonna go ahead and make larger cuttings with those. So I'll just be cutting these in half. Ooh, I accidentally snapped that one with my fingers. Sometimes it helps to have a tool out to go ahead and make the hole so you're not pushing that piece down into it you can pack the soil around it you couldn't even see what i was saying because my hand was right there you can make the hole with the tool and you can take the cutting put it in and gently pack the soil around it there we go did we get it right that time i hope so there it is very simple very easy i still have four cells left there was the one that i broke the piece of stem on so who knows what's going to happen with that one main thing is that these don't dry out. That's the main objective with most cuttings. There are some succulents where you just want to lay them on top of a mix that can be either damp or dry, depending on the type of succulent. With the Tratoscantia, just a lightly moistened soil is usually all they need. They're very forgiving and generally very, very, very easy to propagate. So as far as the pothos go, I have four cells left and I have this piece of stem right here that has enough space to make one, two, three really five cuttings. So I'm going to go ahead and just, we'll just do that. They're going to be very small, but as long as there's some node on them, then hopefully they will do their thing. I usually like to have more space than that on each one of these. That's not much to work with there, but it is a node and it's going into a warm and humid environment. So I think that it will be enough. If not, not the end of the world. And you can see how some of them already have some root coming out at that node. That makes it much easier to identify the node if you're unsure. With pothos, just very gently stick that down in there. Just want to make sure that that node's in contact with the soil. Doesn't have to be far down into it at all. And that's it. Very, very, very simple. <laughs> An odd pairing of plants to have together. But the thing is, I probably should have talked about beforehand just to not confuse people. This is only going to be like this for maximum maybe seven to eight weeks. I have an area in the garden where I would like to put a whole bunch of the Nanotretoscantias and having them rooted into these little spots, these little cells, is going to make it a lot easier to get them into the ground. I can just take my little auger and just boop, 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 make some tiny holes and they'll go right in place. Typically with the Tretoscantia and with the Pothos, I would use a four to six inch pot. Let me see if I have something around so we can have a visual aid here. All right, six inch nursery container. A four inch or a six inch would work totally fine, but typically what I would do with something like this would be to take multiple cuttings, probably four, and uh, pot them into a container like that, or even straight into a hanging basket. If I were to use an eight inch basket or a 10 inch basket, I would use at least eight to 12 
cuttings to get that basket nice and full when it takes off. With that pothos, I went ahead and I cut that up into single and some of them have double nodes on them. This one I kind of missed the mark on. I'm going to go ahead and put it in there anyways. You can see I have two nodes on here and just two leaves and typically I would just make sure that they are barely, those nodes are just barely underneath the soil. And you don't always have to cut them down to a single node. If you have a piece like this, look, look at this. This is a nice piece. It already has some roots going on it. It's nice and sturdy. There really isn't any reason with a pothos, at least because they're such sturdy plants. We couldn't just take that and also include that and just very, very lightly, as I said before, get that covered or at least make sure that those nodes are in direct contact with that moist surface. So doing it like this creates a much more full looking plant, doesn't it? And it looks a lot more productive than what's going on over there. But with those Tradescantias, I, like I said, I don't want them in larger containers. I think something this size is probably just about perfect since I'm going to be lifting these out in, like I said, maybe five to seven weeks, somewhere in there. These will be going into the ground. And within that five to seven week time frame, I wouldn't have even expected these to have done much growing. They should be rooted out very well within five to seven weeks with some new growth coming out of them. At the most, I would expect them to potentially double in size, but that's about it. I just want roots. That's the main concern here is roots. Same thing with those pothos, which is kind of a dumb thing to put in there, but this is as much trade as scanty as I had, so I figured I may as well just fill the whole thing up and just see what it does and see what happens. The oregano should be long gone from this flat by the time I get these going, get them moved outside into the garden. Just looks ridiculous, doesn't it? Having the Tradescantia and then the pothos and then oregano. These things do not go together. Typically they don't go together, but these should actually pair up fairly nicely as far as where they're sitting in the grow room, as far as the airflow and humidity and just the moisture content that they're going to need. I think that this should be pretty good. It's already fairly humid out there, so I'm not concerned about putting a humidity dome on top of this, though typically with cuttings, that's a pretty good idea if you don't have a humid environment. It's about 75 to 85% humidity in there. It's nice and moist, and none of these are plants that are just going to bleh, wither and drop dead if they aren't kept constantly moist. But it's good at, they need it though. They should stay constantly moist, but if you miss a day, they'll probably be all right, because these are succulents and pothos are just tough. And if I didn't have that humid growth space, I'd throw a couple sticks in here, put a plastic bag over the top to help hold in some humidity, keep this moist but not sopping wet. D really don't want water dripping out of it, but I want to make sure that there's moisture in here, if that makes any sense. And then once I see growth coming out, I'm start slowly opening up that humidity dome every now and then to let some air in there and help kind of get them used to the change in environment, and that's pretty much it. They're very simple. You just stick them into some soil and they'll usually grow. There's not much to it. And no, neither of these are plants that I think you'd need a rooting hormone for. I mean, you could use one if you wanted to. It's not probably going to hurt anything, but it just really isn't necessary. It may speed up production with some of them, particularly the pothos. The Tradescantia usually aren't listed as plants when you look at propagation research studies from various growers. Tradescantia is usually not one that they say to use a rooting hormone with. They, as far as productivity goes, it doesn't usually make a huge difference. Wouldn't matter anyways, I'm out of rooting hormone, at least I kind of like to. I have some of the powder, I prefer the liquid. Also the water here, neither of these are really plants that you need to keep in water. Like the plant needs to be well hydrated before you take your cuttings and when you do your propagation, but it's not like some plants like um, begonias, I've noticed it's good to make sure that those go into some water in between the cuttings and getting them potted up and then sometimes even making an extra cut. There are a lot of plants like that where you can get air bubbles stuck in the chambers of the plants and that can be problematic. I only had these in water because I knew that it was going to be a while until I got to this project because I've been doing several other things beforehand so I didn't want them to dry out. That's all that was about. It's not going to hurt though. Keeping them extra hydrated is only going to help them. Lastly, you may have noticed I didn't water them in. I don't think it's necessary with these particular cuttings. I made sure that that mix was moistened very well before I put them in there. If I were to water them in, that may oversaturate things. You just want them in a moist environment. Having some, not air pockets, but having a aerobic action, oxygen down in there is really important to getting them going. If these are overly saturated, it's just kind of the same thing as sticking a plant in a vase. So the plant's just going to take up water and it's going to stay looking nice. Both of these cuttings will likely root just fine in water, but I want them rooting in soil, not water. I want them to know that they need to put out roots. What is that playing? That's a weird playing. I just have better success 
propagating directly into soil. I get things rooted in water just fine. It's the transition out of the water that I just find to be somewhat of a pain in the butt. And sometimes there's a setback and if you just do it right into the soil, then you don't have that setback period. And I think it's just easier that way. But it's fun getting to see the roots come down from the plant. So I understand that part. Or sometimes sticking a pothos in a fish tank looks really cool. With this one right here, I'm really just going to be treating this like it's a pothos I just picked right up from the store. I'll be more diligent about making sure it stays well watered. Don't want the soil to dry out at all until those roots get going. But otherwise, that's it, really. No direct light for either one of these because, you know, they don't have any roots to take up water, so we don't want to stress them out. They aren't pulling up water with those roots, and if they have sudden beating down on them, they can dry up and desiccate very quickly. Don't want that. So they will be under my grow lights, which are pretty dang bright. So I'll keep an eye on that, but these Tradescantia and the Pothos have both been under those grow lights prior to making these cuttings, so it sh should be okay. If it's a problem, then I can put a dimmer over the... Uh, grow light or move it to a spot where it's just not going to get as much light. I think it'll be okay though. Okay, that's it. Did the cuttings. Really, the only reason I even did this video is so that when I'm like doing the plant tours and walking around in my grow space, people aren't like, um, what happened to the artichokes? Where did these things come from? So there it is. And there's my conversation about it. This is sort of a weird way to get the trade of Scantia going. Cause like I said, I'm used to doing it like this, but I think that this is going to work out well for the purposes that I need them for the way I want to grow them and for the amount of time that I have to get them growing. Beautiful pothos. Absolutely love this one. The variegation on this one is intricate and uh, I find that each leaf has much more variety to it than a lot of the other variegated plants. You really never know what you're going to get and the leaves are slightly cupped. Just a beautiful one. I absolutely love that plant so much. Comment down below, say hi, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciate it, especially when it comes to something like propagation. Right, it's something that we all somewhat have some different methods on. The Venn diagram of propagations, we tend to overlap a fair amount, but it's good to be able to go down in the comment section and read some different things people are doing, different mixes they like. If you have a particular rooting hormone, that's a great thing to recommend. And people who just live in different climates, you know, people who live in the desert are going to have to do things differently than people who live in really humid environments, whether indoors or outdoors. It still makes a big difference with propagating cuttings. Anyways, all right, it's time to go. Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day and a great life and that everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. That's not in focus. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.